Hi, and welcome to Discovering Dataflex number 18, with me, Johan Brodfeldt. Today, we're going to look at functions and uh, perhaps some procedures as well. Um, but I started out by doing a Windows project this time. So uh, you do that by adding a project and you create a project. And then you have this Windows project in your workspace. And you can use the Windows project in the same workspace as you have a web project. No problem. Now I want to create a new view. And I select a data entry view. Call that O from test. And here I have my function. And I could run that, but I want to add something to it. I want a button and I want a form like that. I could arrange them so they look a little bit nicer like that, perhaps. Yes. And um, now I want to look at the code. And you can see I have the button and I have a procedure on click and I have an outcome on change so I could actually outcome with this one and on every on change I would get uh, the value and then I could do something so let's see how this runs hmm. Here it is, I have my button and I have my phone view where I can type anything I like. Now, we want to try to uh, update this value when I click the button. And we can do that by using set value of form one to test. Well, let's see what happens. View functions. When I click here, I get the test. Now, this was not a function or procedure. This is a procedure. And we could actually create a function. Let's call it my func and it takes an integer equal a and an integer equal b and you have to specify the return type returns integer and we can add a function return as well and then we take um, integer euret value is our variable, and we move eval a plus eval b to euret value. Return euret value. So. Now we could integer, integer in my help. And now I can call this function. And uh, the way I do that is I write get my function. And the input parameters like three and four to the my val, and then I can use e my val, and that should be like seven. So when I click the button, I should have a seven, and I do. That's perfect. Now. 
I might want to put this my function here, my func uh, outside because I might want to use it somewhere else as well. I can put it out here, for instance. And if I just move it out here, then it becomes a global function. And I can call this just as it is. Let's see, function. There it is. It works. But I might also want to create an object. And as you know, objects are instances of classes. And Dataflex is a bit special because you can actually instantiate an object in code, not in runtime. You could do it in runtime as well, but usually you do it hard coded. Um, o test is a C object, That's a kind of standard object. Now we shouldn't have access to my funk anymore. Compiles, but when I click the button, I get an error because I couldn't find the function. So what I need to do is tell that I want to call my function of my old test. And now we should have something that works. So, but I might want to do it even more complicated. I want an object of math is a C object. And I want to put the function in here. And now it begins to get nasty. Because that means that I have to include this into our object. So I want to get it of U math inside of U test and not the other way around. And now it will still work. And if I just, just to show you, remove this, and just run all tests, then it should fail. There you go, it fails. Now we have the procedure on change. We could actually do a set label of the button one to s value so every time I change the value here this will update the label of the button let's see how that works work perfectly and when I click here this is an external function that updates this and since that also changes this one I expect the button to get the same name ah yeah we need to fix that of course our whole math uh, we'll run this again So I write test, and if I click here, that will change this form, and the change in the form should trigger an update on the button. And that was, works perfect. Now there is one more thing I want to show you, and that is that you could actually, instead of doing this, you could do move my funk. Um, test comma 
3, comma 4. That should actually work the same way. So let's try this. Yes, that works just as well. So you can either call it in this way or that way. And uh, basically, that was all I want to tell you about uh, functions. Now, procedures is a little bit other nut to crack. You could create a procedure, but the procedure does not have a return value. And, uh, yeah, what should we do? We could call this on change. We might want to add a another button. Stop that. And we add another button here, button two. And when we click button two, we should trigger button one. Let's see if we can get that to work. On click. And when you Call a procedure, you write send. And uh, send on click to uh, our oh, button one. And that should be it. Let's see if it works. Yeah, now we could trigger the procedure in button one, so we execute. And this still works. So that is how you call a procedure, and of course. You have the uh, possibility to put procedures in other structures as well. So you could put a procedure, you could actually call it um, let's see. We have the O front test. This should do it. To U front test U button. Now it should go down here and say, okay, of this object, in this object, we would try to find a function. So let's try that as well, just to make sure. No. Did I turn them backwards? So let's see. Yeah, the lowest one should be first. Okay, I always have to remember that. And then the most detail, and then the function. Well, kind of logic. So function test O button on click. O test, which is the outer one. Math, which is this one, and my funk, which is this one. So now we have a pretty good picture of how procedures and functions are working within objects. Good luck with your project. Bye for now.